Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome this afternoon to a special unveiling of all of our candidates for the uh, upcoming general election. It is an honor to be here with all of our candidates behind on the steps of the House of Parliament. Uh, we will be, as you know, for the past few months, we've been unveiling our candidates around the island. All those candidates have been diligently canvassing within their various constituencies. Today, our MPs are once again prepared to show up and carry the flag for the Progressive Labor Party in the upcoming election. As you can see, the team behind us is a great team that will lead us from strength to strength. They have the, they have the experience that is unmatched by any other party here in Bermuda. Now, our first speaker today will be the former leader of the party, MP Alex Scott. Thank you, Mr. Jones, Mr. Premier, Deputy Premier, colleagues. For the media, I have two points. Look behind me, and you'll see about 16, 17 MPs. If you do the arithmetic, you will observe more political experience here than you can find in the entire UBP. That's a good reason for giving the PLP a third term. Now, I said there are two things I want you to do. I'm going to make a few points. Keep your eye on the Premier. When he stops smiling, you let me know. Because that means I've gone too far. But in serving my constituency, you know most recently, the canvas brought up and emphasized the concern for Southlands. And the question out of that became, where did your suggestion come from? How recent? Well, you all will recall that when I was a former premier, we had the Harvard group here, no cost to Bermudians, and they gave a comprehensive study of Morgan's Point. They never got the figure one billion. They never got the figures I hear from Dr. Gibbons, but they did give us something to talk to the, to the, the developers of Southlands with. And the conversation started generally then. It continued when we had in February one of the members of the group come to our meeting and talk to the constituents. And the constituents felt it was all right as long as we kept them informed. However, when there became a second possibility of a hotel, then the constituents turned to myself, especially in the Dunscombe Road, and asked if we could do something about it. Now, I leave it there. But when you hear about clean up, when you hear about one billion, know that we now are in a different place than where we were many years ago, many years ago when the UBP were in power. And we now have someone called Gregory Slayton. And I think it would be interesting to open up a conversation with him about the possibility, underscore the possibility, of in actual fact the US rethinking the assistance or participation in a clean up here. The answer may be no, the answer may be yes, but we have now found ourselves in a new place with all of this experience to work with. Now, in my constituency, we have all of these sorts of things that you would expect. And Mrs. Ednis and Mrs. Rubain are happy women today because the hustle truck, in coordination with Al James, have cleared away the cane grass and those dear ladies can go walking mornings just like they want to uninhibited. And we're using the hustle truck, another product of this government, another product of the experience that we have here. And uh, Dr. Gibbons talks in terms of he doesn't understand where the numbers, I'm gonna leave this to Mr. Horton, but how we can have improved numbers with less students. My son is a good example. He did not finish school here. So he would have been a subtraction Dr. Gibbons is looking for additions. My son now has a Bachelor of Science. He is a pilot. 
with many flying hours and he is now the superintendent of JetBlue. So Dr. Gibbons and his fig fig figures don't always figure. You know, statistics can work for anybody. And I end on this note. When we went to Washington, we argued strenuously for them to consider two things. And I've heard these two things in our constituency. What about the stop list, says the young folks in our area? What are you doing, Mr. Scott, about that stop list? And I would ask the, our dear friend, Mr. Gregory Slayton, to either continue or renew the discussions about Bermuda being relieved, our youngsters being relieved, those who have the seven-year certificate of rehabilitation being relieved of the inhibition to travel. And the other thing that um, uh, we would ask them to continue to look into is the Coast Guard. Bermuda could be well served by Coast Guard. Now, I began by saying there's enough experience up there to equal all of the UEP elsewhere. There's enough experience in myself, certainly to equal uh, the young man. Oh, what's his name? <laughs> Thank you very much.